Okay. Well, good morning and welcome to this special video conferencing event entitled Khartoum Calling, What Next for Sudan? And it's being organized by the Humanitarian Policy Group, the Associate Parliamentary Group for Sudan and South Sudan and the Sudanese Embassy here in London. My name is Jonathan Steele. I'm a, I'm a commentator on international affairs and a former chief foreign correspondent for The Guardian. In that capacity, I've made numerous visits to Khartoum, to Darfur, and to Juba and other parts of South Sudan, starting with my first trip in 1985 to cover the terrible drought and famine which affected much of the country. In one of my more recent trips, just after the CPA, was signed, I traveled with senior UN officials from Khartoum to Juba, largely overland. And we were accompanying hundreds of South Sudanese who'd fled to Khartoum during the Civil War and were now making the long journey home in the wake of the CPA. Although they faced many problems on the way and the villages to which they returned needed massive aid for reconstruction, those were hopeful times. Years of fighting were over and everyone was looking forward to an era of peace. Then last year came the referendum on secession, which went ahead smoothly, in defiance of those who said the government in Khartoum would never permit it. Even more impressively, there was no significant opposition in Khartoum when Southerners voted for independence and celebrated the birth of their new state last summer. What a long time ago that all now seems. In recent weeks, there's been an eruption of violence not seen for a decade, and some analysts have been saying there could even be a return to outright war. So today's event here at the Overseas Development Institute will give us a unique chance to discuss why this has all happened and whether the slide to war can be halted, and if so, how. We will hear from experts in London and key decision makers from the Sudanese government in Khartoum who are here uh, by courtesy of the online web. And of course, you, the audience, both here in London and via the web, where the conference is being streamed, will have a chance to question those Sudanese government representatives. And everything said here will be on the record. This is not a Chatham House rule on background or anything. Everything is on the record, and it will indeed be available online in a recording 48 hours from today on the ODI website, I think. Now, the event, of course, follows a similar video conference a few weeks ago called Juba Calling, where South Sudanese representatives gave their views on the crisis and also made themselves available for questioning. So the format is this. Let me just explain it briefly. I will hand over shortly to Ishmael Kushkush, a correspondent for CNN and the New York Times, who is in Khartoum with our distinguished Sudanese government panelists. He will introduce them and then allow each of them 10 minutes and please rarely no more than 10 minutes each to make an opening statement. After that, our two London panelists will comment briefly on what they've heard. They are Sarah Pantoliano on my left, the head of the Humanitarian Policy Group at the ODI, and William Bain, Labour MP for Glasgow Northeast, who chairs the Associate Parliamentary Group for Sudan and South Sudan. Welcome to you both. Thank you for coming. And when they've given their views, we will open the meeting to our online listeners as well as the audience here. So please ask anything relevant that is on your mind. Identify yourself when you speak. The crisis is real. The need for a settlement is urgent. We all need convincing answers. Finally, let me just make one last point. There can always be technical problems when you set up these kind of video conferencing links. And we don't want to be totally dependent on the mercies of the, of the World Wide Web. So we are extremely grateful that His Excellency Abdullahi al Azreg, the Sudanese embassy, uh, ambassador here in London, who is in the audience sitting in front of me, has agreed to step in and give his government's point of view in the event that our contact to Khartoum breaks down. Thank you very much, Ambassador. <coughs> So there we are. That's enough by way of introduction. Let me hand over now to Ishmael Kushkush in Khartoum. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, this is Kushkush. I'm a freelance uh, journalist for CNN and the New York Times here in Sudan. Uh, here uh, in the panel in Khartoum, we have Dr. Ijami Sikh, who's immediately to my right, a former governor of Darfur and the current 
chair of the regional Darfur Regional Authority. Um, to his right is Dr. Mufrit Sobis, a former undersecretary of uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs and a former humanitarian affairs minister and the uh, current nominated ambassador to Juba. Uh, we are also waiting for a third speaker, Mr. Sayyid Al Khadib, head of the Strategic Studies uh, Center and a member of the negotiating team. Uh, in Addis Ababa. Um, each will give a 10 minutes, uh, and 10 minutes only, as uh, John has uh, um, emphasized uh, introduction on what they will be talking about. Uh, Dr. Tijan.